what I do is appeal to his wife, girlfriend, prostitute, and an association with a man who's got a fetish for tights. Is this just in the bath area, or because of the gaps in that time, Toby is suggesting it could be anywhere? Although this man has got an exceptionally good knowledge of bath, I appeal to women anywhere who's had an association with men who has a fetish for tights, please contact us. We've seen the terrific ordeal that the victims have had to go through. Please contact us. We must stop this man before he attacks again. What about other people? How, how can they help? Apart from this, this pattern, I know it's quite difficult to read this, because there was such a long period. You see these huge gaps here, 92, 93, much of 94, gap in 95 again, and then uh, here in 98. What's going on? How can other people help? There's a possibility that he has attacked other women. If there's any of the viewers watching that feel that they may have been a victim, please contact us. You may hold vital information which may lead to the arrest of this man. I suspect that the trouble is that if other women have been attacked, they've wanted to put this behind them. It's going to be very hard for them to, to call in now. They won't want to. Indeed, but it's very important. We must catch this man before he strikes again. We have special counsellors available for them to talk to. What they tell us will be dealt with in the strictest confidence. If a woman calls now and says, look, I think I was attacked by this man, or just frightened off by this man, or actually raped by them, Will her partner get to hear about it? Will friends? I mean, will this get out to the public? No, we will be treating them what they tell us in the utmost confidence. I can assure them if they phone in now, phone the incident room, ask to speak to a rape counsellor. Now, what about a neighbour, a brother, an uncle, a mum, sister, somebody else who thinks, well, maybe, you know, somebody I know could do this? What, what piece of jigsaw could they put together? We know this man carries a rape kit. A we rape know kit? A rape kit. We know he carries a knife, balaclava baseball cap, headband. Th this sort of stuff? Indeed, yeah. yes. And also tights. What I am appealing to is the man's father, mother, brother, sister. Someone that knows someone who carries these items. Contact us. We can eliminate anyone from this inquiry if they're not connected. But it's vital we catch this man. We really do need that call. Well, there you have it. Please call with any information you can about a man from Bath who's been uh, around for at least 10 years, has a fetish about tights. He's out late at night, remember in Kingswood in, in 1996, so most of it's around Bath. Maybe a burglar at some stage. I don't know, any suspicions, they really can be easily checked out. And please, as Bill says, don't assume somebody else will call with the right name. Our studio is 0500 600 600, or you can try the incident room direct. That's uh, also a free phone number, 0800 169 1926. 0800 169 1926. If you've been a victim, please call us of this crime. If you've been a victim of any crime and you want to talk to someone who could just help you, there are volunteers now at Victim Support Line, and there'll be people there till 2 a.m. The number is 0845 30 30 900. Jeremy. When I was growing up, people pulled back the net curtains. Nowadays, we have closed circuit cameras instead. Now, here's a really cracking example. It's a robbery in the Alliance and Leicester Building Society in Southport on Merseyside three weeks ago. Now, these two, they're not the brightest pair. They haven't even noticed the camera, leaving us with some very good pictures. Now, I'm confident that someone will recognize them, and there's a big reward. The incident room is on 0151 3466. That's Liverpool. Treble seven three four double six. Two more cowardly robbers who happened to meet two of the gutsiest shopkeepers. This is an off license in East London about a year ago. Now the man on the right with the knife threatens the shop owner at the till, who trips the alarm and throws chili powder at his attackers. It gets too hot for the intruders in many ways, who take fright. The woman then gives chase. After a year, these two may think they've got away with it. Please help make sure they haven't and tell us who they are. 0500 600 600 or you can ring the local police on 0171 230 2061. That's 0171 230 2061. Now, let's go back to an August bank holiday in 1977. That was the year of the Queen's Silver Jubilee. We're about to piece together clues from a murder. A case has been reopened thanks to the progress in new DNA techniques. Mary Gregson lived in Shipley in West Yorkshire with her husband and their young son. Their home was beside the Leeds Liverpool Canal. And the policeman that you're about to see is one of the officers who worked on the case all those years ago. Mary was my sister, my best friend. She took me to school for the first time, cried buckets when she had to leave me. We were very close. 
There's not been a day gone by in 22 years that I've not thought about Mary in happier times, but what caused her death? It doesn't go, it never goes. It seems a long time since I saw her. Um, but a lot of things are very vivid. It's just like yesterday. Being locals, we never thought about the canal bank being lonely and dangerous place. It was a regular walk through childhood into adulthood. I got to know Mary when I first got married and I went to live next door to her. Became friends and we stayed friends even when I moved away. She was working with me at Salt's Mill. That was a meeting point on the canal side. And if I was there first, I'd wait, you know, watch, see if I could see her coming, or vice versa, uh, which is what I did that night. I stood and watched for her and uh, because she didn't appear. Soon afterwards, another woman was also heading for work and had a disturbing encounter. What's happened to that girl? What do you do with her? Nothing. She, she fell off the wall. What's her name? Where she live? You know where a girl lives? House by the canal. There are no houses there. What's your name? You want help? I get ambulance. Police. I, I don't need nothing. The witness heard Mary moan and remembers the man as in his early 20s with fair or light brown hair. Now he'd be in his mid 40s. By tragic irony, Mary's husband was cycling home along the towpath just out of sight of his wife and her attacker. Hi, Mum. On you go. He was about, I should think about five foot nine, five foot ten. He had a long, thinnish face. His eyes were just piercing. They just held me and they've held me ever since. And at his feet, lying straight out in a straight line, was a youth, I thought. I just thought it was extremely odd, but it never occurred to me that she was dead. Sorry to bother you, Bill, but I was wondering if Mary was okay. Okay? But what do you mean? What's happened? She's with you, isn't she? She never showed up for work, Bill. I just assumed she were feeling poorly. I waited for her at bridge, but there were no signs. That night was horrendous. I never want to live another night like that. I didn't sleep. We just waited. I just sat in a chair in my bay window at home and waited and watched. The following morning, my husband had gone back out to resume searching, and he came back with a police officer. He'd witnessed my sister being brought out of the river. Um, and that's when we realised what had happened. As time goes on, you still keep hoping, you never stop hoping that somebody's going to be caught. I want to know why somebody could attack somebody like Mary. 